here with Paul, the owner and manager of Soul Food, um, organic grocer in Wanaku in Queenstown, who's well renowned in the local community here for being ethically sourced, healthy foods, and obviously everything's organic and local where it can. Is that a justified? Yeah, I'd say that's that's what we aim for anyway. Fantastic. Okay, so um, obviously we've just been just got out of the worst of lockdown. Um, how's the lockdown been affecting you guys at Soul Food, Paul? Uh, it's been a um, twenty-inch sword, really. Like um, it came so quickly, you know, that we weren't prepared. Um, well, I wasn't prepared. I never really saw it coming. Yeah, of course. Um, so I had to, you know, learn a lot straight away, um, make a lot of changes straight away, um, work out what I was doing with my staff, uh, who was able to work, who wasn't. That was a bit of a challenge at the beginning. Um, the biggest challenge, actually, initially, was working out whether I could stay open or not under, um, under Level 4. The yes. definition of an essential business kept sort of changing. Uh, every day, basically, for that first few days, um, and sort of came to light now. Yeah, yeah, and that was put me in a difficult position because I chose to open, but meanwhile, other organic stores around the country were closing. Yeah. Um, one in Wellington had the police come in on the first day of level four oh, and right? uh, tell them to close. Oh, jeepers! Yeah, that is tough, isn't it? So we had a, we have an email three months all our. Um, well, most of the organic stores in New Zealand. So there was a lot of conversation happening on there. Uh, some were choosing to close, some were choosing to stay open. Uh, so that was really unclear. All right, okay. And so yeah. how did um, how did the nature of day-to-day -day business have to change? Like, for example, the, the social distancing you have to have at work with staff or having to have only yeah. some staff at a time or how did you manage that? Um, we had to get we had to put together a plan. I, I applied. Um, I put together a plan for MPI, mm -hmm. um, and they didn't actually approve it um, until three weeks afterwards. So Ooh, yeah. about a week ago, uh, I finally got word from them, but they were just overwhelmed. Yeah, of course. Um, so I just thought all the um, all the sort of obvious things um, in the plan, um, having hand sanitizer on on, on the counter for people to use. Um, having staff working at a distance from each other, uh, which was pretty easy for us because we only had one or two staff working at a time. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, um, we don't have pay waves, so we were just using standard FPOS, which people, of course, had to touch or not necessarily yeah. touch with their hands, but most people do. So we would had a protocol of sanitising that after every use. And so how about um, supply? Have you had any um, troubles getting supply obviously throughout New Zealand grocery stores have struggled where buying is yeah. higher than normal has it been too much of a trouble for you guys yeah we've definitely gone through a bit of a curve um, yeah. initially people were panic buying even though yeah. they were pretending not to um, but that's what they were doing um, so our shelves emptied out pretty quickly um, in both stores in Queenstown in particular um, okay. there's more of a panic there um, and then um, some of our suppliers closed down for level four, uh, some of the smaller ones. Um, and then other ones became overwhelmed. Um, we suddenly couldn't buy any seeds. Both our seed suppliers oh. ran out of seeds. Um, our two main um, dry goods suppliers in the North Island, organic dry goods, both um, ran low in, in several staple items like flour and um, some of the grains, and, uh, tin goods and things like yeah. that. So yeah, there was a flow on effect of, of um, shortages there. And is that sort of balancing out now is, you know, the peak of the pack buying drop and then there's a bit yeah. of a, a trough. Yeah, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it is, yeah. Right. yeah. There was also, we had issues getting in meat. Um, we sell quite <laughs> a lot of meat in our stores. And um, there was a lot of controversy in the early days of, of level four about whether butcheries could trade or not and so originally uh, and also bakeries and originally both my main uh, red meat butcheries said that they would continue to supply us and then both of them stopped after a week they couldn't and okay. so we, we had trouble getting in beef and lamb i couldn't get in any actually um, right. 
And then after a while, I was able to get in some frozen lamb uh, from one of my suppliers uh, it, that they had stored. Yeah. Was that, was that because there was a lack coming from the farm? Was it going that far back, do you think, or was it at the butchery level? No. Too? Yeah, it was the regulations that the government were imposing upon oh, the butchery. Of course. They yeah, weren't allowed. Yeah, only, only supermarket butcheries were allowed to uh, oh, yeah. function. Yeah, and then it changed again about a week ago. Okay, so it's back um, to normal now. Is that right? Well, obviously, it's was level three, I suppose. Uh, I haven't actually got any in yet, but um, have some on order. <laughs> so soon, so, <laughs> yeah. all right. So <laughs> hopefully, well, yeah, I can see that it is going to. But one of my um, suppliers said to me that he wasn't sure whether he was going to be able to start up again, that it was really difficult trading. It's a tough environment. Time. Yeah. Just and just another thing I'd like to just say is it's been, yeah, we've been focusing a lot over the years on, you know, on local supply, you know, on, yeah. on getting, as you well know, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> getting um, local produce from, from as local as possible. And what's been interesting is that during, you know, all the global situation, this board has been closed and everything, that uh, having our local supplies has been a real godsend, you know, yeah. like, it's just, you know, as long as there's a, trans a local transport network um, functioning, which there has been, then we're able to get all our local food um, just as we normally do, and it's fresh and there's no problems, there's no threat at all in terms of um, of not being able to get in stuff from overseas you know and that has been uh, an issue that has arisen during this time it could have been a lot worse if there'd been major transport issues if it had rather been if it had not been in the coronavirus and it had been something else mm -hmm. that had caused major global panic then who knows we may have been cut off in terms of freight coming in um, and so it has highlighted the importance of um, eating locally and having a local food um, food chain, you know. Um, the, the shorter the distance between the fork and the farm is, yeah, it, it improves the resilience of the food chain, right? Exactly. So that has been highlighted, and not just with us, but just customers have realised that as well. And you know, people have been initially when we first were going into level four, a lot of people panicked. They didn't know what what was ahead. What was growing here? And that that was why all the panic buying was going on because people. That's interesting. Yeah. Even though you know the government was saying, "Look, it's all fine. The supermarkets are going to continue. There's no issues with supply chain." Even though they were saying that, people were going, "Okay, we don't know what's around the corner here. Is there going to be a food shortage?" You know. So um, I think a lot of people were, you know, suddenly aware that we get a lot of our food from overseas, and that maybe that's not a sustainable thing. I'm not against that per se, but. Um, we we do need to make sure that we look after our own our own producers and our own areas, mm -hmm. so that um, in the event that there is some sort of international catastrophe, we still can feed ourselves. Yeah, totally, totally. And I guess that was um, the reason why you found things like seeds would disappear off shelves is because people wanted to grow their own food because there's nothing safer than having spinach in your yeah. own garden, which you can see grow. Yeah, that's interesting. Right. Yeah. It requires a bit of education, though. People were buying all sorts of things that you don't plant at this time of year. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. No point in buying tomato seeds as far as I'm concerned <laughs> in April. Sure. But yeah. um, unless people were actually thinking, oh, I'll buy them now and then plant them in not, you know, October. Yeah. I don't yeah, know, yeah. but it's I have the feeling that people are simply ignorant of oh, growing season. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's an opportunity to learn a few things now. Eh? Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. I never realised that. Yeah. Mm. The more that people, the more that you know about the food that you buy the more resilient you're going to be as well in the case. Yeah. Okay, so that, that sort of flows on to my next question. Um, just looking over to the next year or the next foreseeable future, what, what can Kiwis do to support businesses such as yourselves? Uh, and what, what do you think the year ahead is going to hold? It's a, it's a tough question, nobody knows. But. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be really difficult for everyone. Um, I think particularly difficult for uh, tourism areas such as where, where I am. Mm. Um, so I don't see it being particularly rosy um, for uh, for business in Queenstown and Wanaka and New Zealand in general. Um, but, you know, there is a silver lining to every cloud and and I think this will change the, well, actually already has changed the attitude of a lot of New Zealanders. Uh, I've seen an increase in support from locals already who, and people have said, um, Came up, came, have been up to me, come up to me, and, and sort of said, 
you know, that they really want to support us, that they value Fantastic. us as a small business. Yeah. And these are people that I know, but not necessarily um, customers, you know, like mm -hmm. people who maybe have always sort of looked on and not really maybe understood what organics is about or whatever, but they still value the fact that we're a small business doing something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're not following the supermarket model, you could say. And, and obviously Soul Food prides itself in selling locally grown fruit and yeah. veg. So by supporting a local supermarket, a local grocery, you're supporting local growers as well, right? Yep, true. Absolutely. So yep. A big part of uh, how, how we'll probably get through is by really celebrating Kiwi made Kiwi growing and that's food. the silver lining that I see really I think that this will either force or just wake up um, mm. or encourage people to to look at where they spend their money and also people are looking at their health you know yeah, a virus I mean <laughs> the yeah. best way to um, for an individual to deal with a virus is to have a healthy immune system the best way to have a healthy immune system is to have a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle so yeah. You know, so, eating uh, yeah. fresh, local, um, low processed organic, food. Yeah, organics is part of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a, yeah, it's going to be um, sort of on people's minds a lot more now, just to how important eating and looking after yourself is. And uh, yeah. and that does bring me on to my last question, a wee bit actually. Um, so since we've been in lockdown, I find myself I've spent a lot more time learning how to cook and learning how to cook good food. Yeah, like food anyway. <laughs> what's been uh, what's been your lockdown highlight? What's been um, we silver lining over the last four weeks? Um, I, I think it's been about people, and I've seen a lot of support um, shared uh, amongst people. And even though we have to keep uh, physical distancing and you know various other measures, which kind of push us apart in some ways there's still been an enormous amount of coming together and uh, sharing and honesty and courage um, that, I, that I've seen a lot of and, and the way that the streets have been reclaimed by people as opposed to motor vehicles yeah, yeah um, and, and the lake the too I presume about. I'm a walker I walk all the yeah. time I have a dog it's not new to me to to walk around the parks and the streets but i've never seen so many people out and about and you know all ages um all sorts of people and it's kind of like everyone's been the same you know like there's no people aren't wearing suits and ties and then other people are really casual everyone's just casual yeah you, know? nice, yeah. you don't you don't know who the office workers are and who the yeah. corporate people are and who the working class people are or whatever labels yeah. you want to use yeah. um we're all just out there in the streets together there's kids and and it's been a lot of laughter and a lot of people yeah. aren't rushing people are just walking casually and i've really enjoyed seeing that yeah i've um i too am in central Targa and across the lake from us or across the road from us we've got the a lake track which just goes around and never seen so many people out there enjoying it. And we are, we are in such yeah. a beautiful and amazing place. It's really cool to see that people are getting to take time. Yeah, As are we. and I hope that continues, you know. I hope yeah. that out of anything that um, we've got from this process, um, what I'd love to see continue is for people to um, continue to be out walking and relaxing and uh, just being with themselves and, and whoever's there. And I think that if we can let go of the little habit that we've built up now of physical distancing and actually not be afraid to be in each other's spaces, yeah, uh, I think you know then then that'll be a real shift for people. Yeah. And I think it'll be really positive. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes, really appreciate it. Yeah, cheers, Hamish, and stay in touch. Like if there's yeah, anything else I can help you with, yeah, yeah more you. than happy to.